What is up, Mouse Fam? Welcome back to another video. With summer in full swing, it means one of the most popular theme parks in the Northwest, Wild Waves, is open for the season. For those who don't know, Wild Waves is a local park that used to be owned by Six Flags, but is now privately owned. It has a wide array of theme and water rides. So join me today as we rank all 26 theme park rides at Wild Waves. Let's jump into it. <music> Before we get started, just a little bit of history on this park. Like I said in the intro, Wild Waves used to be owned by Six Flags. It is located in the Seattle metro area in a city called Federal Way. It is a water and theme park. It's the only theme park in Washington State. Now, most people do know Wild Waves for the water park aspect of the park, and it's more geared towards families. That is a solid section, and I enjoy the water park side of Wild Waves, but today we're going to be focusing on the theme park side. The theme park side is broken up into three different areas. Only one of those areas is actually really well themed and has a cohesive theme, but the other two areas are where most of the rides fall. So we're gonna take a look at all three of those. There are over 10 water slides, as well as a lazy river, a wave pool, and a kids area as part of the water section of Wild Waves. But today we're not gonna be taking a look at that. We're only gonna be taking a look at the dry theme park rides. With that being said, let's jump into the list. Coming in at last place at number 26 is the Kitty Boats. There are five entries on this list that are only rideable by kids. That means if you're 54 inches or taller, you actually cannot ride the ride at all. So for obvious reasons, most of those rides come lower on the list. The Kitty Boats have no real theme. They're only rideable for kids. A lot of the kids, like my nephews, don't even enjoy these rides. So unfortunately, it comes in last place. Coming in at number 25, the Kitty Combo. These are better known as the car rides. Just like the boat rides, only rideable by kids, no real theme, not really that fun unless you're a very young kid, comes in second to last. Number 24, the Red Baron, otherwise known as the airplanes. Again, don't want to repeat myself, but just like the boats and the car rides, Red Baron is only rideable by kids. It is just a Dumbo clone and there's not much theme there, only rideable by kids and it's definitely pretty old. The mechanics are showing it needs an update, so it comes in lower on the list. Number 23, Frog Hopper. This is a kitty drop tower. I don't really know what the theme is. Frogs, I guess. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Adults can ride this in the middle section, so I have ridden it with my nephews. It's a kitty drop tower. That's about all you're getting. There's no real theme. The wait times are pretty rough. My nephews are okay with it. Not much to say here. Coming at 22, Safari Jeeps. This is the first entry on the list that at least has some good theme. The Safari Jeeps are located in the first section of the park as you come in, but there is not a whole lot going here because it's just a ride that kids can go on, so I've never been on it. My nephews do like it a lot, but because adults can't go on it, and it is showing its age, it comes in lower on the list. There is some really nice thematic elements here, but clearly the park is not really putting a whole lot of money into this section of the park, so it's getting worse and worse by the years. Coming in at number 21, Dodge and Bumper Cars. These are in the Old West territory of the park, which is a very well-themed area, actually pretty impressive for a local park, and the only themed area of the park but they're bumper cars. I'm not a big fan of bumper cars. They always have a long wait, not a whole lot to them. They're basic bumper cars. I don't really like these. I've only ridden them once in my life and I almost never ride them when I go to the park and I'm an annual pass holder. So they come in lower on the list. Coming in number 20, the Ferris wheel. <laughs> I was gonna put this ride higher on the list because I do love Ferris wheels. This is easily the worst Ferris wheel I've been on. Probably one of the worst in the world. It's like a kiddie Ferris wheel, but a little bit bigger than that, but it's really rickety. It has terrible operations. It's an 11 minute ride time. You only go around twice. It's super sketchy. You have to ride with a partner. I don't like riding this ride just because of how scary it is. My nephews like it and Ferris wheels are fun, but there's no theme here and the ride is definitely showing its age and is actually pretty scary with how old it is. So it comes in lower on the list. Coming in at number 19, our first big adult thrill ride on the list, Disco Flashback. Now this is a pretty traditional flat ride that a lot of parks have. And it would come in higher on the list, except that it's in the first area of the park, which has no theme. It's just a parking lot. There's not even that many other rides here, so it kind of stands by itself. I don't really like rides like this. I mean, I'll do it, especially more than a lot of the other kiddie rides on this list, but it makes me sick. There's no theme here. It just looks ugly. It does have high capacity, so that's cool, but it has really bad operation, so it's down a lot. I don't really like this ride that much. It should probably come higher on the list for you thrill junkies out there, but I almost never ride this ride because it makes me sick and it has no theme whatsoever and it's always closed. Coming at number 18, the Coastal Clipper. This is a kiddie version of like those pirate ship rides that swing back and forth. Adults can go on this ride, so that's fun. I do have a good time with it, 
with my nephews on this ride. It's themed better than some other areas of the park. It does have a kind of Northwest theme where this is located, but unfortunately it makes you pretty sick. It's got low capacity. It's just a kiddie ride. So it's probably one of the best kiddie rides in the park, but it's not that great. Cut okay, number 17, Enchanted Railway. This is a super tough one for me because this is a kiddie ride that adults cannot ride. You have to be 54 inches or lower to ride it, which sucks because a couple years ago, pre-COVID, this was not the case. And this was actually one of my top 10 favorite rides in the whole park. It's a beautiful scenic train ride that's actually really well done. It reminds me of like a very smaller version of the Disneyland Railroad. It's got a lot of great props. It's kind of got a small town like the end of Big Thunder. It's got a nice cave scene. It's got very scenic areas, big trees. This is in the best themed area in the park called Old West Territory. So it really just sucks that this ride adults can't go on because it used to be one of my favorite rides in the park. Unfortunately, it's seen its age and clearly with them not wanting to put work in to allow adults to ride it, they're not putting much money into the ride. So this one pains me to put so much lower on the list because it could be so much better, but right now it's in disarray. Coming at number 16, Scrambler. The Scrambler is another traditional flat ride and I'm laughing because this ride actually is a lot of fun. I had never been on it until recently because it just looked so bad and my nephew really wanted to go on it. And we had a ton of fun on this ride, but it is so poorly themed. There is no theme to this ride. It's just placed right on an asphalt, basically parking lot. The ride itself is really ugly and it looks like it hasn't been painted or touched up at all in years. Uh, so the ride's really ugly. There's no theme. There's no queue. This is probably the worst themed ride, maybe in the whole park, even worse than the kitty rides. But ironically enough, it's pretty fun. So uh, yeah, it, this is a tough one to place because I do enjoy being on the ride. It's just such an ugly ride to look at. I don't like it being there. But as far as traditional flat rides go that bring a lot of thrill, this one definitely packs a punch. All right, that brings us into our top 15. Coming at number 15, Kitty Coaster. This is the first of four roller coaster credits at the park. This, of course, is a Kitty Coaster. It's even smaller than like Goofy's Barnstormer or Gadget's Go Coaster at any of the Disney parks. It's probably about half the size of those, but it does pack a punch. It's actually a really fun ride. I always make sure to ride this ride when I'm at the park with my nephews. My nephews always want to do it at least a couple times, and I have no problem doing it. It packs a punch. There is no theme, unfortunately. Literally, the ride is just called Kitty Coaster, and there is no theme there at all. So that bums me out because if they added some theme to this ride and actually put some, you know, not even that much money, but just some time into this coaster, it could be a really solid kitty coaster. Unfortunately, there's no theme around it. So while it is fun to ride, it comes in lower in the list. Coming in at number 14, Gambler. Just like Scrambler, this is another flat ride, but there's a little bit of a twist on this ride and it is themed better than Scrambler. It's in a pretty nice area of the park and it has a fun theme. The problem with Gambler is it has really bad ride ops, so it's down often, has really rough downtime, so it's kind of tough to ride. Unfortunately, it is just a traditional flat ride, so not a whole lot going there, but it's a pretty fun ride. Coming at number 13, I-5 Skydive. This is one of the hardest entries on the list to place because it is a paid attraction, and I hate paid attractions in parks. It's also an attraction that is very rarely, if ever, open. I've been a season pass holder for almost four or five years, and I can only remember a handful of times going to the park and seeing this open. So it costs money to ride. It's almost never open. It is incredibly, incredibly scary. It's actually the only entry on the list besides the kiddie rides that I have never been on because I'm just so freaked out by rides like this. So I don't enjoy it, but I have talked to a lot of friends that love this ride. Anytime it's open, it feels like a rare credit for them. They'll pay the money and do it and get a ton of thrill. Probably packs the most thrill in the entire park. Almost for sure does. But for the cons listed earlier, I don't like this ride at all. So it comes in lower on the list, but for some, this may be really high. For me, I would actually normally put it lower, but being objective, some people like it. So it comes in at number 13. Coming in at number 12, Wagon Train. This is probably the exact opposite of I-5 Skydive. This ride is not that much fun. It's a kiddie ride, but it's themed incredibly well. This is one of the best themed rides in the park. It's up in the Old West Territory section, which I love to rave about. Unfortunately though, this ride is more of a kiddie family ride hybrid, so it's not super fun. There's not a whole lot of thrill here. Themed really well, that's about it. Coming at number 11, Hang Glider. This is a pretty unique spinner flat ride. I do like how unique this ride is, so I like to ride it, but it kind of hurts, and uh, it doesn't really make me feel that good after riding it. It's also in a terrible area of the park with no theming whatsoever. So this ride is tough because I do like it. I think it's unique, but it's in a terrible area of the park, and it's pretty painful to ride, and kids don't like this ride either, so it comes in lower on the list. All right, that brings us into our top 10. Coming in at number 10, Kanga Bounce. From my perspective, this is the only time I've ever seen this ride in any park. So I think it is a pretty unique flat ride in that regard. It's pretty fun. There's not a whole lot of theming. 
uh, which is a bummer because I feel like this ride has a lot of potential and has a lot of ride downtime, which does stink. But King of Bounce is a really fun ride. Kids can go on it. Adults will get some thrill on it. It's a good family ride. Really, really unique ride system. Themed, not great, and not in a great area of the park, so it comes in lower, but it does crack the top 10. Coming in number nine, Pirate Ship. This is a bigger version of the Coastal Clipper, which came in lower on the list. This ride has a lot of thrill for those thrill junkies. Has some okay theming, not great, but it does fit in okay where it's at in the park. But this ride has a lot of downtime. Definitely makes me feel sick. I can't ride this ride more than once. So yeah, this ride is fun. It's just kind of a basic flat ride. Most theme parks have rides like this. So it comes in not high on the list, but it is a fun family ride with some thrill. Coming in at number eight is the Soaring Eagle Zipline. Just like I-5 Skydive, this is a paid attraction to the park. But if you're an annual pass member, you get one free ride on this ride of the park. So it's not totally paid for if you're an annual pass holder, you can't get it free. It's just a basic zip line, so it's not super unique, but it gives you great views of the park. You go over the nice lake in the middle of the park, and you go over the water park section as well, and the theme park section. So really nice views on this, and it is fun. Kids can go on it, adults can go on it, but it's a paid attraction if you're not an annual pass holder, so that hurts it a little bit, and not much theme going on, and it's a basic zip line. So I do like this ride a lot. I'm just not really sure how it fits into the theme park. Coming in at number seven, Antique Carousel. Now, admittedly, I'm a sucker for this ride. If any of you have been to Wild Waves, you're probably going to think this is a little bit too high on the list. But I really love Antique Carousel. It has the most history in the park. This is an early 1900s traditional antique carousel. It's completely kept up very well. Super fun. I love going on this ride. My nephews love going on this ride. It's located at a really nice area in the park. I wish they would build around it some more and put some more money into it. But as stands, this is a great ride with some great history. I might be a little bit biased and put it higher than it needs to be, but I love this carousel. Coming at number six, Brain Drain. Now this is the park's adult drop tower. As far as drop towers go compared to other parks, this is tiny. It's only 85 feet, but that's perfect for me because I hate drops and I won't do any of those towers if they're over like 200 feet. That's just too high for me. So I actually really like this uh, drop tower. There's no theming around it, which sucks. Kids can't really go on it and the queue is really, really bad. Terrible queue. But it's a fun drop tower, and it usually doesn't have super long waits. So I like to do this ride every time at the parks. The reason why it doesn't come higher is because, like I said, there's no theme, and kids can't do it. But as far as drop towers go, this is a solid addition to the park. All right, that brings us into our top five. Now, these top five, I would say, are actual attractions that are worth going to the park for. I don't think any of the other 21 rides are worth making an appearance for. Obviously, you know... You can go do them and get your credits or have fun with your kids. But these top five are actual legitimately fun rides. Coming at number five, Wild Thing. Now this is the theme park's first ever roller coaster. It got brought here from out of state in the 1990s. It's an okay coaster. It's one of the four coasters in the park. This is the most thrilling coaster. It's the only one that goes upside down. But unfortunately, it's a really short ride time and it's gotten really rough lately. The last like five years, this ride's gotten really rough. They haven't put a whole lot of TLC into it. It has an okay queue and loading zone, but it could be better. It's located at a cool area of the park where you have, you know, nice views of the park and it's right by the water park. But this ride is just slipping because they're not putting any TLC into it. So it's bumpy, it's rough, and it's just a really short ride time. So if you like coasters, you want to get a good coaster credit, this is definitely a solid entry. But the park is letting it get a little bit too rough. So I wish they'd pour some more money into it to get it higher on the list. Coming at number four, Timber Axe. Now this is a traditional flat ride, but it's probably the best themed flat ride at the park. And it might be one of the best versions of this flat ride in the world, at least that I've experienced. This is a super thrilling ride. It actually makes me feel sick, so I can't go on it very often. But like I said earlier, it's themed extremely well. And it's definitely one of the best rides in the park for adults. Kids, A lot of kids can't go on it because of the height requirement. But if you're an adult seeking thrill and you like flat rides, Timber Axe is definitely going to do the trick for you. Brings into our top three. All three of these, I would say, are really solid rides that definitely make the park stick out. Coming in at number three, Klondike Gold Rusher. This is a play on the traditional mouse coaster that is found in, you know, all fairs and most theme parks, but I think it's done really well. I would say this is akin to Goofy Sky School at Disneyland, and I actually prefer this ride to Goofy Sky School. It's themed really well. It always has super short waits. It's located at a really nice area in the park that has a bunch of trees, and it's located next to two other really good rides in the park. So I really like Klondike Gold Rusher. The biggest con is obviously it's just a mouse coaster, so that exists in a lot of other places. And it's down a lot. It has, a, it has really high downtimes, which does stink and drops lower on the list. But if you can go at the park and the ride is open, definitely make sure you get a ride on Klondike Gold Rusher. All right, that brings us to number two. Coming to number two, Lumberjack Falls. This is the ride's only 
water ride that's in the theme park section. So you do need to be wearing, you know, shoes, socks, and a shirt, but it's still a water ride. It's going to get you soaked. And the reason why I love this ride is because it's themed so well. It has the best queue in the park and it has an amazing drop and it has really good views. It's a great ride to watch kinetically. It's a great ride to be on because you get great views of the park. The only con to this ride is it's super short. It's just an up and back uh, water ride. So it's only about a minute long, two minutes long, but it's a really fun ride. Get on it if you can. This is a great way to cool off on a hot summer day and it's themed really well as well. But that brings us to number one, no debate, easily the best ride at Wild Waves Theme Park is Timberhawk Ride of Prey. In my opinion, this is the only ride in the park that makes Wild Waves stick out as a destination for theme park fans. This is a fantastic wooden roller coaster. It was built in 2003 specifically for the park and the company that built it has only built, I think, three total rides. So this is a super unique ride. I love Timberhawk Ride of Prey. It has an incredible theme. It's a super fun wooden coaster. It has a lot of great dips, a lot of great airtime. Unfortunately, just like Wild Thing, it, this ride might need a retrack. It's been now open in 2003, so 19 years without a retrack, and you can definitely feel it. It's a really rough ride. The trains are really rough as well. That's my only con to this ride because the queue is solid, the wait times are always low, the theming is great, and the wooden coaster as a whole looks beautiful, super fun. If they could retract this ride, it would legitimately become one of the best coasters on the West Coast. As is, it's probably only worth going to if you're in the area, but for roller coaster fans, this one is a definite must hit on your list. Timberhawk Ride of Prey is easily the best ride at Wild Waves Theme Park. All right, guys, that is our list. Let us know down in the comments if you've been to Wild Waves, what do you think of the list? If you've never been, are there any rides on this list that you would wanna go to and see? Timberhawk Ride of Prey is probably the only one, but maybe there's some others that caught your eye. You guys can also hit that subscribe button for more content. With that, we'll see you next time. Peace.